Hello all and welcome to another chemistry lesson. So today we're going to be talking about how to complete reaction rate tables. So we've seen tables like the one on the screen before. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at what happens if there are certain areas of the table missing and you're asked to fill it out. But let's start with the basics here. This is the chemical formula we're looking at. Oxygen gas plus two nitrogen monoxide gives you two nitrogen dioxides. Easy enough. Uh, as per usual, this two and this two should be subscripts, but I can't do subscripts in this program, unfortunately. So if we look at the actual rate table, time here is being measured in minutes, which is awesome. Nice and easy. Concentration measured in moles per liter, our standard units of concentration. And uh, one thing that I like to do, especially if I'm going to end up graphing these, we'll do this a little bit later, is change the concentrations a bit. So if I wanted to make this easier to work with, I might say this is the concentration of moles per liter times 10 to the minus 6. Now where did I get 10 to the minus 6 from? Well, I want to make these numbers nice and easy. So I start at a decimal and I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sweet. So if I times, if I had all these numbers and I times them by 10 to the 6, what would I get? Well, instead of 0 .000343, 3, I could just say this is 343 times 10 to the negative 6. So I can use scientific notation to make these things a little bit easier, and I could refer to this as just 343, 317, 289, which are kind of easier numbers to work with than saying 0 .000 every single time. So I'll probably do that a little bit later in this lesson, just so you guys are aware of what I am talking about. It's just that I'm going to be multiplying everything by times 10 to the negative 6. Basically, whatever I say is multiplied by 10 to the negative 6. And that would have to be noted where you write, like at the axis of your graph, is concentration on the left side, you'd have to say, okay, it's concentration times 10 to the negative 6. Just makes it easier to graph than putting all those zeros in all the time. Anyway, you look at this rate table here, and what does it mean? Well, let's start here. Time 0. Time 0 means nothing has happened yet. This is the very beginning of the reaction. No reactions actually happened. You've just put stuff together to start it. And so if I've got oxygen and nitrogen, monoxide as my reactants. This is, a, this is how much oxygen I'm starting with. This is how much nitrogen monoxide I'm starting with. And if I'm just starting the reaction, how much product should I have made? And yeah, the answer to that is zero, right? We've just started. Nothing's even had a chance to react yet. It's the instant we put it in the jar, the beaker, whatever it is. These are gases, so maybe it's in some kind of container. But it's just started. So we have no products left. Now let's go, let's jump forward in time. Let's jump forward in time two minutes. Two minutes later, we use something to measure the concentrations. And these are the numbers we come up with. So these would be measured numbers. At least one of them would have to be a measured number. The other ones, though, we could technically calculate. So take a look at this. If I go from 0 to point zero 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 five three. How many moles did I make? Or, I guess not how many moles did I make, it's concentration. What's the change in concentration? I've gone from none to 0 0.000053 moles per liter. So I have increased by 0 0.00053 moles per liter, molarity. Now, if this one goes up, point zero 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 five three you see now I do the ten to the negative six thing. What should happen to this one? Well it's a two to two ratio, right? So it's one to one. So if this one goes up point zero 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 five three, you would expect the nitrogen monoxide to go down zero point zero 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 five three. And if you crunch the numbers, that's actually exactly what happened here. That's where point zero 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 four six one comes from. It's, I've made this many moles of nitrogen dioxide, which means I must have used up the same number of moles of nitrogen monoxide because it's a 2 to 2 ratio. That was getting a little confusing. I'm going to erase some stuff here. Let's go back to about here. So yeah, I've gained 0 0.000053 moles per liter of nitrogen monoxide. What about oxygen? So forget that one now. 
I'm going from here to here. So every two nitrogen dioxides that I create, how much oxygen does it use up? Well, it only uses up one. So I'm making twice as much nitrogen dioxide as I'm making oxygen, or as I'm using up oxygen, I guess I should say. So it's not going to go down, but it's not going to go down by 0 0.000053. It's going to go down by half that amount. Because I've made twice as much NO2. You can see the ratio here is 1 to 2. 1 to 2. So it is half as much that I'm actually making. So I just divide the change by 2. And that's where this number comes from. It's rounded, but that's where you would get that number from. So that's just a little bit about kind of how these things, these reaction rate tables work together. And you don't have to go one step at a time. If I didn't have any information here at all, this was all missing, and all I knew was this section, I could still figure out this and this. I'd say, okay, what's the jump from here to here? Well, I have gained, because it's a product, I'm making it, 0 0.000204 moles per liter. So that's how much my concentration has increased. Which means, look at your mole ratio, for nitrogen monoxide, I would have to lose. Well, it's a 2 to 2 ratio, so it's the same amount. 0 0.00204. And if you were to take this number minus 0 0.000204, this is what you'd get. You'd get the answer, 0 0.000310. So you can work your way anywhere across the table by adding or subtracting. Just remember, when you have products, you should be adding stuff. If you have reactants, you should be subtracting them because they're being used up. Products are being created. So now we've got a little bit of theory about how these tables work and what, what they're kind of telling you. So they're telling you the concentrations at a certain time and how they're changing as the reaction progresses. Let's do an example. So here's what I know. How do I fill out the rest of this table? Well, let's start at what I know for sure. I know my mole ratios. So from oxygen to nitrogen, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. From nitrogen monoxide to nitrogen dioxide, it's a 2 to 2 ratio. So I know those. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to write those in a different color so they stand out a little bit. That's a 1 to 2 ratio. That's a 2 to 2 ratio. Perfect. Uh, what else do I know? Well, I know what we're starting at. 1 mole per liter for both. And I know nitrogen dioxide started at zero. Now, it doesn't have to start at zero. Theoretically, you could start with some nitrogen dioxide in the container. It's not going to kill you. But you just have to look at the jump of how much it changes. So in this case, 0 0.000053 is what I've created. So if I want to figure out how much nitrogen monoxide, I take what I started with. And I would add the ratio, 2 over 2, which is just 1, so I'm not going to do it in the calculator, times whatever my change is. 0, 0, 0, 5, I missed a 0. 0, 5, 3. Oh, nope, I made a mistake here. I'm not going to add it together. Because this nitrogen monoxide is a reactant. It's getting used up. I started at 1, and I'm getting rid of 0 0.000053 times the mole ratio. So I'm pretty sure i got a calculator in here somewhere. Tools, math tools, calculator. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to put my calculator here so you see stuff over here. So I've got, I started at 1. I am subtracting 2 over 2, which is just 1, so I'm not going to do it. 2 over 2 times that, so it's 0 0.000053 equals. So I'd end up with 0 0.999947. Whew. Let's do the last one as well here. It's going to be the same steps, right? It's 1 minus whatever this changes, which happens to be 0 to 0.000204. It's just 204. 
So I'd end up with 0 0.999796. And I can do that for all of them. And it doesn't really take that long to actually do. Just got to make sure that your decimals don't look really wacky all of a sudden. Because that means you probably put one too many zeros in there. And 1 minus point zero 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 one oh eight. There we go. Cool. So that's the first column done. We did all nitrogen monoxide. Looks scary. Happens pretty fast once you know which steps you're taking. Now, let's do oxygen. What happens to oxygen here? So again, this is the change in moles per liter point zero, in the first step. 0 0.000053. So in the first two minutes, that's how much nitrogen monoxide we make. But you got to keep in mind your mole ratio. So I'm starting at 1. I'm going to subtract... Not the complete 0 0.000053, but half of it. And why half? Well, it's the same as timesing by one half, right? That's why I'm dividing it by two. I'm timesing it by half. Because the mole ratio is one to two. For every two changes, every two moles per liter change I've got for nitrogen dioxide, I only get one change in concentration for oxygen gas. So I'm getting half as much shift. It's, I find it easier to think about it the other way. If I were to use one mole of oxygen, I would make two moles of this. If I, which means for two of these, I'd have to use one of these. So every two to one ratio, one to two. Anyways, we can plug that into the same calculator. Where's my calculator here? 1 minus 0 0.000053 over 2. Now this calculator should do order of operations, so it should do my divide first for me. Most calculators do. Yeah, it did. Sweet. Rolled the dice on that one. 0 0.9999735. No. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've just got an extra decimal point. I'm going to erase the last decimal point. I'm going to round this. And the reason I'm rounding it is because I want to be able to compare this number and this number with an equal amount of accuracy. They both have six decimal points now. So you can see that nitrogen monoxide dropped to 47 is the last two digits. Oxygen only dropped down to 74, which makes sense. There was less loss of oxygen. Why was there less loss of oxygen? Because I need less of it. I only need one part oxygen for every two parts nitrogen dioxide. So it makes sense that you should have a slower drop in oxygen. Let's rip through the rest of this one. Oh, that's not where I want to go. Rip through the rest of these really quick. So I got 1 minus 0 0.000108. And that's the, seconds, uh, the four minute step there. And I'm looking at the concentration of NO2 and divide it by 2 because of the mole ratio. 9, 9, 9, 4, 6. 1 minus 0 0.123146 divided by 2. 0 0.999927. And 1 minus 0 0.000204. Oh, that didn't work. There it is. Divided by 2. 0 0.999898. So you can do a quick check here. My final one that I'm looking at here. So I've made 204. I've taken away about... So let's call it 200. I've used up about 200. I've... Or sorry, I've created about 200. Here I've used up about 200. 204. And here I've used up about 100. Oh, so 100 oxygens and 200 nitrogen monoxides create 200 NO2s, roughly. These are estimates, right? Does that actually match? Well, of course it does. One, two, two. So that's just a quick double check. You can do it for any of your rows. Just see if your ratio still holds true because, well, it better. Whoops, didn't want to erase the, the actual writing there. There we go. So if you've been given your product, that's how you can find 
what the concentration of the reactants were. Now, you'd have to know what you started with. I mean, you can't work backwards to find your starting point. That doesn't really make any sense. You'd have to know what you started with to do the rest of the table, so that'd have to be given to you. But as long as you know one column, you can figure out the others as long as you have your starting point. So let's try it this way now. I'm going to give you oxygen. Ooh, tricky, tricky. So we're starting with oxygen now, and you've got some numbers in here. I give you your starting point of NO and your starting point of NO2. If they don't tell you the starting point of your product, which sometimes happens, always assume zero. So let's jot down our mole ratios really quick. So remember last time we did our mole ratio, we did what we were given going towards what we needed, right? So now we're actually being given oxygens. And so it's not, if I want to find nitrogen dioxide, you put the one you're going to on top. So this is a two to one ratio. And so is this one, they're both two to one ratios. So the one you're going to goes on top of the mole ratio. The one you're coming from, the one you know, goes on the bottom of the mole ratio. Little tidbit to, might want to jot that down somewhere. That's a handy little thing to know. So I've got a two to one mole ratio here. Which, I mean, if you think about it a little bit, kind of makes sense. Okay, for every one thing I use up in oxygen, I need to use up two things in nitrogen dioxide. You could probably figure out it's a times two pretty quick. It gets a little trickier when you have like three to twos and two to threes, then you got to remember which one goes on top. But as long as you keep thinking about it like a recipe, oh yeah, one cup of oxygen needs two cups of nitrogen. So if I'm using this much oxygen, I need to double that for nitrogen monoxide. But speaking of this much oxygen, how much is it? Grab the math calculator. Come on. There we go. So I'm starting at point zero zero zero. I'm starting at three forty three. I'm ending up at point zero 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 three seventeen. Oh, that's real handy. Thank you for that. So it's zero point so it's two point six times ten to the negative five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Zero point zero 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 two six. Hopefully your calculator doesn't leave you in scientific notation like mine just did. So that was our change from zero. Ah, nope, bring me that back. From time zero to time two. Is it a gain or a loss? Well, it's a reactant. And if it's a reactant, it's being used up in the reaction. It's being used up, it's a loss. So we've used up, we've lost 0 0.00026. I mean, you can see that right here, right? We've gone from 343 to 317. We've lost some concentration. So what's going to happen to nitrogen then? What's its change going to be? Well, first step, is nitrogen a reactant or a product? Well, it's over on this side. It's a reactant. So it's going to lose as well. And how much does it lose? 2 over 1, or 2, 2 times as much. So 0 0.000052, if I double it. I'd have to use the calculator for that one. Lucky me. So OK. Well, now I'm going to use my calculator. I don't want to do the next one in my head. I'll probably get it wrong. So I've got 0 0.05. That's what I started with. I've decided that I have subtracted 0 0.000052. So I'm now at 0 0.049948. So I'm showing a lot of work here. Probably for these, you might want to show the work for like one step. And then all your other steps will use the same work, and that'll just make things a little bit neater. Like if I was going to do my next one here, I would just grab my calculator. If I want to do my next row down, and I'm going to say, okay, let's start at oxygen again. My change is 0.000343 minus this, 0.000289. So that's my change. I need to times it by 2 
That'll get my change for nitrogen monoxide. And I'd have to subtract that from 0.5. Here's a cool trick with subtraction. If I subtract 0.5 here, I know I'm doing it backwards. But I actually get the same answer, just with a negative sign. So I can ignore my negative sign, and that will tell me what the answer is. So once you've shown your work for one, that's probably all right, because the steps are pretty simple, right? You just find the change, times it by two, subtract it from here. You could do it in the calculator pretty quick. So let's get rid of some of this stuff now. Uh, yeah, I don't need that either. Yike. Ah, close enough. So let's look at nitrogen dioxide now. Same kind of steps. Let's do from the zero from two minute mark. So to go from here to here, oh, I probably shouldn't have erased that. <laughs> I'm going to use it again right away anyways. So to go from there to 0 0.000343 minus 0 0.000317. It was 0 0.000026. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's the one. Perfect. Okay. So that was my change for O2. Now I need to find my change for NO2, which is a 1 to 2 ratio, so I times it by 2. But this time I'm doing a product, not a reactant. So we're not getting rid of it, we're creating it. So if I times it by 2, that gives me 0 0.000052 again. And what's 0 plus 0 0.00? Well, easy enough. So my next one's going to be 0 0.00052. That's an ugly 2. I can do better than that. There we go. So the NO2 column is actually really easy because our starting point is 0. As soon as you figure out what this change is, you can actually just write that change down over here because that's going to be the answer. Actually, let's open that up again. I wish there was a faster way to get this calculator out. So, let's do the four minute. Point zero 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 three one. Oh, clear. Not three one. Point zero 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 three four three minus point zero 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 two eight nine. So I'll do the four minute jump here. Gives me that. Times it by two to get my change. Now I've already subtracted that one here so that's already done but I know that's gonna be my answer here because I'm adding 0 0.108 to 0 so that's really easy math let's do my next step 0 .00, 0 0.000343 minus 0 0.000271 times it by 2 because that's our mole ratio so over here, I've got 0 0.000144. And if I wanted to find the difference, I would take 0 0.05, oh, 0 0.05, and subtract that number. Zero point zero four nine eight five six. So you can see, these numbers are getting smaller, these numbers are getting bigger, we're doing things the right way around here. And you'll notice these numbers don't even go up evenly, right? 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, cool. Then it goes 6 to 10. Does that change anything? It doesn't, which is awesome. That's one of the nice things about these numbers. You don't have to factor in the time at all unless you're putting things on a graph. It's just a little bit being careful where your axis is. So I do the same steps. 0, 0, 0, 3, 4, 3. My starting minus where I end up at, 0, 0, 0, 0.000242. Equals that. I times it by 2 because that's my mole ratio. And if I want to find my nitrogen monoxide, I say, okay, well, I started at 0 0.05 and I had to use up 0 0.000202 after my mole ratio. So I'd be left with 0 0.049797. So whether I have a product or a reactant, I can kind of do the math both ways. Find the mole ratio, find the difference, and that'll expand to the rest of your chart. We'll do one last quick example here. Wait a second. 
Oh yeah, I was saying we could do nitrogen monoxide. We can do nitrogen dioxide. This is where we have all decimal numbers. And so if we had to, actually, I, hmm, what do I want to do here? Yeah, I want you to try these ones on your own. I'm going to work through these silently and try not to say something. And you can see if you can get the right, the same answers here. So give you a chance to practice these ones. So about my calculator. You might be able to follow a little bit of what I'm doing on my calculator here, but I'm going to try not to talk through my steps. The problem is this math is hard enough. I probably have to show my work just to get it right. Otherwise, I'm going to get myself lost here. Hold on a second. No, I take it back. Stop working on this question. There's something wrong here. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> oh, silly me. This question was supposed to be a nitrogen dioxide question. I put it on the wrong column. I knew something was wrong because I wasn't making products anymore. Look at this. I went from zero, and then I made a whole bunch, and then I started losing it all of a sudden. That doesn't make any sense. These are supposed to be here. All right, that's what I was expecting it to be. Put them in their own column. My bad, guys. All right, here we go. This is what it should look like. So now I've got nitrogen monoxide. I want to walk you through this one real quick, at least the first step for it. The rest I think you guys should be able to take care of yourself. Yeah, I'll stick with blue. Why not? So I've got to do my ratios again. From nitrogen monoxide to nitrogen dioxide is 2 over 2. Where I'm going to over where I'm coming from. Nitrogen monoxide to oxygen ratio, and that's an invisible one, is going to be 1 over 2. Where I'm going to away from what I know, right? So I got my ratios. And then I got to say, okay, what's my change at the two-minute mark? Grab the calculator. Oh, already had math open. There we go. So I'm going from 0 0.000514, and I'm ending up at 0 0.000406. So my change is 0 0.000108. Now I'm writing that under the nitrogen dioxide column, not showing really all my work, because I know I'm starting at zero, and I'm going to add one times that change. Well, one times that change is just that change, so I'm just writing it down there. So the change is 0 0.000108 times 2 divided by 2 equals 0 0.000108. Add that to 0. It's still 0 0.000108. Now what about oxygen? I started at 0 0.000343. Question, am I creating or destroying? Well, it's a reactant, so I'm using it up. So I am using up, I am subtracting... 0 0.000108, but not all of it, right? I've got a mole ratio still. I'm subtracting that divided by 2. I'm subtracting half of it. So my new oxygen concentration is 0 0.00289. And again, you could follow the same steps. Find your change, divide it by 2, find your change, divided by 2, find a change, divided by 2, to fill out the complete table if you wanted. All right, here's a chart, nice and full. Very nice. Let's graph it. Big, bold letters. Graph this relationship. Two hints I want you guys to know about, though. One, make this graph as large as possible. If you're doing this on graph paper, it is very important that this graph is big because what we're doing with this graph is using it to find reaction rates. And to find reaction rates, well, I'll sketch something and show you here. All right. Let's say I've got a graph that looks like this. It's not a nice straight line. Well, it shouldn't be going backwards. Like that. It's not a straight line. So there's two kinds of rates I can find using this graph. I can find an average. What's the average rate for the entire reaction that I've measured? And in order to find the average rate, I would basically take my ruler, or in my case, just the straight line tool, and I would connect a line here 
and I'd find the slope of that line, which means I'd pick two points that are nice and easy and do rise over run. Or a more mathematical way to write rise over one, run, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you pick your two points, you pick one of them to be number two, one of them to pick number one, you plug in your y coordinates and your x for point two, your y coordinates and your x coordinates for point one, and you solve. Now that gives you your average. If I wanted to find, let's use green, if I wanted to find my instantaneous rate, what is the rate at exactly five minutes? Oh, so I'd have to go on this I have to go on my graph, which is hopefully labeled properly. I'd go up from the five and say, okay, here's the five minute mark on my graph. How do I find the rate there? You draw what is called a tangent line. So that is a line that just touches the graph. Well, that was not a very good tangent line. I'm gonna undo that one. I'm gonna do it by hand. You draw a line that just touches the graph. That's even worse. It's honestly much easier with a ruler. Why don't I just get my ruler out? Math tools. Where's my ruler? There it is. So you grab your ruler. I can't win today. There we go. Stop that. You line it up so it just touches at one spot. Draw your line. There we go. i close that earlier now. Whatever the slope of that line is that just touches here. So you draw your tangent so it just touches at time 5. Whatever that slope is would be the slope, uh, would be the instantaneous rate at time 5. But if your graph is small, like this tiny little one I drew in the corner, you see how hard it was for me to get that tangent line right? It's a nightmare. If your graph is big, like this, tangent lines are much easier to work on. So the second thing, what should our concentration axis be? Now this ties back to what I talked about at the very beginning. If you just put concentration of moles per liter, you're going to have to write 0 0.000 whatever all the way up the graph. It's an absolute nightmare. So a much better bet is say, how many decimal points do I need to make these numbers easy to work with? One, two, three, four, five, six decimal spots? Cool. I'm going to make my concentration and just say, it's all times 10 to the negative 6. So instead of having to write point zero 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 one zero zero, I can just say 100. And that gets us close. Now you're going to say, what the heck do we graph here? We've got three different charts to do, right? We've got, I got this set of stuff, I got this set of stuff, I got this set of stuff. I got three chemicals I need to graph. And you're right, you're going to make three different lines on this graph. Now, how you make those lines distinct from one another is up to you. If you like using different colors, go for it. If you like using different patterns, also an option. I know some people that draw a line and just put X's on it, and that's one. So you'll draw a regular line, and then your next one's a dashed line or something. Up to you. Whatever you want to use to differentiate your lines, your call. Just make sure you have a key on your graph. So. I've actually written down all those concentrations on my on a little sticky note here, so I actually know what I'm doing. So I'm going to do oxygen in black. So at zero, oxygen's at 343. One, two. So these are split up by uh, 25. So 300, 325, 350. I need 343, so I'm probably here-ish. Then at two minutes, I was at 317. 2 minutes, 317-ish. At 4 minutes, I'm going to be at 289, 225, 250, 275, 289. At 6 minutes, I'm at 270. So there's the 200, 25, 50, 75. So just less than the 75 mark. And at 10 minutes, now here's where you want to be careful. If you look at my time axis, you can't actually see my axis label because this little bar covered it, but it says time in minutes. Even though the times on the chart are 0, 2, 4, 6, 10, that is not what I write on my graph. 
intro to graphing 101, you have to have evenly spaced things. So I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And because I don't have a data point for 10, I just don't put one in. I skip right to 10. 10 is at 241. 250, so I'm probably down here-ish. There we go. So you can see I've got a very... It's almost a straight line, but it flattens out a little bit. Not my prettiest curve. But yeah, so it's, it is curved, but very, very, very slightly. If we look at nitrogen monoxide, now I'm going to switch. I'm going to make nitrogen monoxide red. So I'm going to add that to my key there. At zero, nitrogen monoxide was at 514. At two, nitrogen monoxide was 4, 25, 50, 76. No, sorry, 461. 50, 60, so we're probably just above the line there. At 4, nitrogen monoxide was 406. I remember these are actually like 0 .000 406. Right, if we check it, 0 .000 406. That's where those 100 numbers are coming from. Uh, at 6 minutes, I was at 368. 350, somewhere in the middle-ish. And skip the 8, I go to 10. And my nitrogen monoxide was at 310. So you can see this curve a little bit better, right? It's a slightly steeper curve. And that makes sense because it is two times as much going on as oxygen. There's twice as much drop, twice as much curve. The last one we got to do is our product. And we can put this all on the exact same graph. Nitrogen dioxide. At zero, we had zero nitrogen dioxide, which makes sense. We're creating it. At two, we had 53, so basically at the 50. At four, we had 108. At six, we had 146. And at 10, we had 208, or 204, so basically there. And so this curve is going the other way. So you can see they're all heading towards kind of a flat line in that direction, which tells you what about the reaction rate. It starts out pretty, well, not super fast, but it starts out speedy-ish, and it ends up quite flat. Flat means slow. So all of our reactions do that. Our reactants start out pretty fast and then slow down, both of them. And our product starts getting formed quickly and then flattens out. Which kind of makes sense. You wouldn't be able to have a reactant being used up quickly or quicker and quicker without making more and more product. You can also tell quickly from these graphs what is a reactant and what is a product just by looking at the graph. Anything that's going down is a reactant. It's being used up. Anything that's going up is a product because it's being created. All right, so here's our graph, or not our graph, sorry, our chart. Some of the questions you might get with this. What is the average rate of reaction for nitrogen oxide and oxygen and the formation of nitrogen dioxide over the entire 10-minute interval? Determine the rate for each. So if I want the rate of NO2, or of, oh, let's start with O2. Let's do O2 in black first. Whenever you need to find average rate, you're doing the slope. Now, it's actually much easier to do this from a data chart than from the graph itself. I've got the data chart, and I know my y values were, uh, were concentrations, and my x values were time, right? If you look at the graph, time was on the x, concentration was on the y. So I say, okay, what are my two points? Well, point 1 is time 0, point 2 is 10, because it asked for the entire 10 minute time, starting at 0, going to 10. So, all right, 1, 402, the y value of point 2 was 0 0.000241. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use it once from the graph. It's just easier. It's 241 times 10 to the negative 6. The y value of point 1 was 343 times 10 to the negative 6. 
and my time goes from 10 minutes to zero. Gonna need a calculator for this one. 241 minus 343 equals negative 102. And again, that's times 10 to the negative 6, so forget that. 10 minus 0 is 10, so divide by 2. Oh, whoops. Why did I say divide by 2? Negative 102 divided by 10. So I have negative 10.2. And don't forget your times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. That was my average reaction rate for oxygen. So every minute, I would use up, on average, 10.2 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. That's how much my concentration would change. So I'm slowly eating it up. And it makes sense it should be negative, because again, it's a reactant. It's being used up. I'm going to skip nitrogen dioxide because it's the exact same kind of idea. I'll just show you the difference for nitrogen dioxide because it's a product. So same steps. My Y2 value is 204 times 10 to the negative 6 minus my Y1 value, which is 0. Right? I'm using the 10-minute mark and the beginning. And I look at my time. My time was 10 minutes. I'm just going to write the 10 down there. From 0 to 10 was 10 minutes. So difficult math, 204 divided by 10 gives me 20.4. And you can't leave it there because you got to remember your units were in times 10 to the negative 6s and always write your units down. Now notice this positive now. Every minute I am making a change in concentration of 20.4 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. So on average, every two minutes, it should be about 40.8. So you look here, this is slightly above the 40.8. This is slightly above the 40.8. And then it starts being below the 40.8. I'm just finding the average for the whole thing. It doesn't mean every step is exactly 40.8 times 10 to the negative 6. It just means that on average, the curve would be around that much per minute. So it gives you an average rate over whatever the interval is. You might get something like this. What is the average rate for the first four minutes and the last four minutes? All right, let's do one of these ones because these take a bit of time. Let's do nitrogen monoxide because we didn't do it last time. Why not? Let's do first four. And then we'll do last four after. So first four minutes means this is point 0.2, this is point 0.1. Point two, point one. Alright. So, formula. I'm going to do the whole thing. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. Let's punch in what we know. Y2, and I'm going to do it longhand instead of using the scientific notation shortcut, just because both work. I want to show them both. Minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Grab the calculator. Honestly, most of the time I do these, I'm pretty sure I do them with the, uh, I usually do them with the decimals. Unless the decimals are crazy long and I really don't want to punch the zeros in, I usually keep the zeros. I just find it saves me from making the mistake of forgetting to add the scientific notation back in at the end. 0 0.000406 minus 0 0.000514. So I have negative 0.000108 over 4 divide by 4 so I'd have negative uh, 2 7 1 2 oh. 1 2 3 4 5 yep that's the one I just check these when I make it by double checking my count I know I need to count negative 5 so I gotta go back 1 2 3 4 5 yeah that puts me at 2.7 which is what the calculator says I should have So my average change is I'm losing 0 0.000027 moles per liter per minute. That would be my average rate of consumption. I guess technically you should probably add the per minute in there. Another way to write this actually makes it neater. 
molarity per minute, right? Moles per liter is just molarity. You can say molarity per minute. That's my change in molarity each minute. So that's the first four. I haven't done the question yet. I got to do the second four. That's why this one takes a long time. So second four, or sorry, not second four, but last four. Where are my last four minutes? Oh, well, from six minutes to 10 minutes, that's four. So I got to go from here to here. So I'm going to use the same formula again, but now my numbers are going to be 0 0.000368. Oh, no, I put Y1 in. Y2 is 0 0.000310 minus 0 0.000368. And again, it's a four minute time interval. So you could do 10 minus six. It's going to give you four. I might as well, uh, yeah, I'll just show it. That's where the four comes from. So y2 minus y1, or x2 minus x1, sorry. 10 minus six. But if you know it's a four minute time interval, you know four is your denominator anyways. So point zero, oh, 0, 0, 0, 0.000310 minus 0 0.000368 equals that. Divide by four equals that. So my rate is negative 0 0.12341. Four five molarity per minute. So look at the rate difference there. It's almost half the rate. So the first four minutes is a twenty seven. The last four minutes is at a fourteen point five or a fifteen. So as this reaction progresses over ten minutes, the rate at which the reaction proceeds, how fast it goes, actually cuts itself in half as you use up reactants get slower and slower as the concentration drops. You guys know that concentration is a major factor in how fast a reaction goes. So as, a as you are using up reactants, as your concentration drops, you can see a rate drop. It is pretty significant. All right, last one. Last one? Last one. Find the instantaneous rate of consumption. So instantaneous rate. Now this is still going to be rise over run, but the problem is that it's at a specific time, which basically means you're probably going to have to use the graph. To get the slope. Because you don't know what the change is at for, you know how much concentration is at, for example, the four minute mark. But you don't know how much it's changing. You don't know what it was at 3 minutes 59 seconds. You don't know what it was at 4 minutes and 1 second. Using those two times, you could probably figure it out. But you don't know those two times. You're stuck. So you're going to have to go to the graph. So what do they want us to do? Let's do one of these. Uh, let's just pick one. Let's do nitrogen dioxide. It starts at 0, which, I don't know, it's a product. I like products. They're a little easier to look at. We need to find it at 2 minutes and at the 10-minute mark. Now this is not going to be very easy to do, even with my big graph, because my lines are really messy and I have a hard time drawing on this board. But let's look at the two minute mark. Nitrogen dioxide is my blue pen. I'm going to do my tangent here in green. So I'd look at the two minute mark, I grab a ruler, tools, uh, no, discipline tools, sorry, math, ruler. Don't start drawing yet. No, don't start drawing yet there. Okay. So I need to make sure this touches. At just It doesn't cross the line. I need it to just touch the line. So we're getting closer. That's probably pretty close. Uh, maybe I can do one better. We'll call that. We'll call that good. So I draw my line. What? There we go. Draw my line. All right. Close that ruler now. So I got my tangent line. 
I gotta find two points that will be really easy to use. So I'm looking at two points kind of that are at an intersection. So I'm gonna say this is probably a good point right there. And probably this one here are good points because they're right exactly on intersections, which should make it easy. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each second is split into eight intervals. And I'm at one, two, three, four, five. So I'm at five eighths of two seconds. Ugh, I probably should have picked a better gap for my time. Five eighths times, oh, five eighths times two seconds. All right, so this is the one and a quarter second mark. So I'm at 1.25 seconds. Seconds. And, well, I'm right there. I'm at 25 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity per liter. So that's point one. Let's look at point two over here. One, two, three, four eighths. Oh, good. I'm exactly two and four eighths. So I'm at Oh no, not two and four eighths. There's a two second gap, so this would actually be the three second mark. So I'm at exactly three seconds, and my molarity is now at 75 molarity per liter. My concentration, sorry. And that's point two. Okay, got the numbers I need. So y2 minus my y1, oh, almost forgot. See, this is why I like to have send a negative six. So 2 minus 1, I'll be at 50, and 3 minus 1 and a quarter. So I've got 75 minus 25 over 3 minus 1.25. Whoa, why did that just become an equal sign? There we go. Uh, 3 minus 1 and a quarter gives me 2 minus a quarter gives me 1.75. Alright, so grab the old calculator. And again, I'm still in scientific notation here. I just haven't written it out yet. I'm trying my very hardest not to forget that. So I got 50 divided by 1.75. So I end up with 28.57. Again, it's times 10 to the negative 6 molarity per liter, or sorry, moles per liter, so molarity per minute. Did I write those units wrong on the other page? Oh, I think I did. Let's close that calculator. Yeah, not be mol it'll be moles per liter, or molar. It's just concentration. It's not molarity per liter. That'd be weird. It's just molarity. So that would be my instantaneous at the two minute mark. You have to draw the tangent and then you got to find the slope of the tangent line. Why does that... Did you see, does that disappear on your guys' screen too? Where'd it go? Weird. Anyway, draw the tangent. I'm going to redraw it. It's going to reappear as soon as I do. So draw the tangent and then find the slope of the tangent. There it is. My board's being weird today. So, find the slope. And then you've got the instantaneous at two minutes. Now you could do it again at 10 minutes, but take a look at this graph. How easy is it gonna to be to find the slope there? It's gonna be very close to zero. If I had to draw on my graph a little bit nicer and had an, you know, actually able to make a nice curve, it would be a lot easier to do. But because my curve is pretty flat here at the 10 minute mark, I think I would have a very difficult time. That's not even going to work. Uh, back, I need to start above it. Like I could find the tangent just short of the 10 minute mark, probably about there. But like, look how flat that line is, right? That line is going to be very close. To I mean, there's a slope to it, but not very much. So I'm not going to do the 10 minute mark just because it would probably be more confusing than anything with how flat that line is. But you can tell that the 10 minute mark would, whoa, that's not what I want, I want my pencil. Uh, that 10 minute mark would be a much lower number 
And by that I mean closer to zero, not really lower per se, because if I was looking at the reaction rate of a reactant, let's say this one, it starts out very negative and gets closer and closer to zero. So it just becomes closer to zero each time. So you have a much lower number, it gets closer to zero. It's lower for nitrogen dioxide because it is a product, it is getting closer to zero. But your oxygen and your nitrogen, the product, the rates would actually be getting closer to zero. The rates wouldn't be as negative as they were before. So why does the rate change? That's kind of the big question. And by now I think we should be able to get the answer to that. It's the concentration concentration of reactants has decreased, lowering reaction rate. So the actual speed of the reaction would be much lower because there's way less reactants around. And if you think about this in terms of molecules, I just have this is my box filled with bouncing molecules. So here's my O2s all over the place. And imagine these zipping around quite quickly. And then I've got, what else did I have in there? NOs. I've got NOs. These are my NOs. There we go. So those are all zipping around, if, and they're going to bump into each other. They're moving all over the place. They're bumping and smashing. If I drop the number of those, if I take my eraser and I get rid of half of them, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's get rid of two more. One, two. Look how much extra space they have. They're not going to crash into each other as often. If they're not crashing into each other as often, they're not reacting as often. If they're not reacting as often, to us it just looks like the reaction has slowed down. The lowering of the reaction rate happens because we've used up reactants and they're just not around to bounce anymore. There's just not as many to crash into each other. And so that's kind of it for reaction rates, for how to fill out those graphs or those charts if you need to couple hints for how to graph them, and a quick crash course on how to calculate average rate, which is just the beginning minus the end, which is actually usually the easier one to do, and how to find the instantaneous rate, which inclu includes drawing the tangent and then finding the slope of your tangent line. So as for usual, if you got any questions, fire me an email, we'll set up a voice chat, we'll do what we need to do. But until then, or until next time, that's it for today.